Hi everyone. I just wanted to let you guys know real quick before this podcast starts. Um, in the next few months, the upload schedule might change. Usually I try to stick with one video a week because that's what I can do right now with being at work 40 hours a week and barely having time to record these videos. But I've been trying to keep it a steady pace at um, a solid one video a week, sometimes more if I have time to do it. But the upload schedule might change in the next few months because I am going back to college. I'm going to be taking online courses at Full Sail University and this is kind of like a dream come true to me because I never thought that one, I would be able to go to Full Sail University and two, let alone go to college for anything that I would be loving to do. I'm going for digital cinematography. I, if you've known me for long enough, you know I've always wanted to make movies and stuff. So, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know that the upload schedule might be changing and big things are happening for me. Um, hopefully, with the projects that I do at Full Sail, I might be able to share some of them on YouTube uh, if I feel confident in them anyway. I know there's a lot of projects that some people don't like putting on their channel because... They just feel like they can do better, but I'll share what I can with you guys. Um, so yeah, without further ado, please enjoy the podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Good, the Bad, the Blank podcast. Today's episode is a special one, specifically because, as you can see, we have a bunch of new faces, and one of them was actually very difficult to get in touch with, but we will get to that later. So... Of course, you guys know me as Adam. I am the host. I have the YouTube channel, three, uh, Decades of Gaming. We post video games, video game videos all the time. We have another series, Next Gen, where we play PS1 games and Onward. And we also have a Tabletop Decades series where we play board games instead of video games. So, Travis, why don't we start with you? Why don't you introduce yourself and... Tell us why you're here. Why did I pick you? So I'm Travis, and uh, my friend over there, that's Jerry. Uh, we like to call him Jerry. He's just hanging out for the for the podcast. Uh, I am here because I love horror movies. I love it when there is no hope, and throughout the whole movie, you know there's no hope for everyone involved. Um, that's That's the best. So I'm here to learn a little bit more about how they're made. That's interesting because, like, I think an hour and a half ago, I just watched the Blair Witch Project for the first time ever, and I don't understand why everybody hates that movie. It's incredible. I am more of a zombie fan. I know that everyone is after Walking Dead. I was a zombie fan when it was like OG zombie fans. Uh, so I like it when you watch the movie and you're like, ah, you're going to die, but like you're just delaying the inevitable. I like that. <laughs> All right. Mike, you're up. What's up? I'm Mike. Um, I think I'm here because I am a really big fan of film. Uh, I really enjoy all types of movies. Horror movies are amazing as well. Um, and I generally have a little bit of knowledge of stuff that kind of goes on the inside stuff a little bit. But, you know, just to throw my two cents in. And as far as a film that I enjoy the most is probably John Carpenter's The Thing. That's a good one. That's a good one. I love how you say. Really enjoy the practical I, part. Yeah, I love how you say. I think I'm here because this. Like, I don't really know why I'm here, but I'm here. <laughs> yeah, you know, I just float around. <laughs> and I saved the best for last because Dylan was the person that was hard to get in touch with. Dylan, why don't you introduce yourself? He is our special guest tonight. Hi, I'm Dylan, and. Uh... I'm here because Adam reached out. I make short horror films that I put on my YouTube channel. And yeah, I agree with what, what Travis and Mike said. I'm, I love horror, obviously. And actually, I'd say if I were to pick some favorites, The Thing as well is definitely one of my favorites. And, and funnily enough, Blair Witch Project is also, I know Travis, that wasn't necessarily your <laughs> favorite, but, but Adam, since you mentioned it, um, that, that's like my kind of thing. So those two movies, love them. All right. So now that everybody is familiar with everyone, I have to say, I, when I discovered Dylan, because like you said, I reached out to him. When I discovered him, I think I was searching for 
one of my favorite indie horror films. I think it's called Signs. And, or no, Bells. It's called Bells. Um, and I just happened upon a picture of a girl with white eyes, a mouth open, and like, uh, how would you describe it? Like, liquefied, if you're a Photoshop <laughs> nerd, liquefied all the way to the other side of the screen, and it said transfigure. I looked at that, and I was blown away because... Yes, you can tell it's indie, but it's very, very different. If everybody, anybody watching, if you haven't seen Transfigure yet from Dylan himself, please go check that out. And I saw that. I found his channel. I saw other films that he did. And I'm looking at his subscriber count and how many views he has on these videos. I'm like, okay, I'm going to reach out to this guy. He's not going to talk to me. Who am I to this guy? He has so many people watching his videos. Like, he's not going to talk to me. But then I remembered that my friend told me a long time ago, just ask. The worst they can say is no. So I looked, I, I hate to say it this way, but I kind of stalked your YouTube page to find <laughs> contact right. information. I'm flattered. <laughs> so I found his email and I reached out to him. And a couple weeks later, I think he responded with, yes, I would love to be on your podcast. So Yes, finally, we have somebody else that is outside of my usual friend circle. Well, I'm happy to be here. And it's funny you say that because I actually was thinking of reaching out to someone who, um, who I was nervous about reaching out to, who uh, had some advice possibly to give about film festival thing. And I was so not going to ask but then i thought the same thing i was like i may as well just do it because i had a way of communicating with them but i assumed that they wouldn't respond mm. and they didn't respond <laughs> but um but you know maybe in a couple days they'll respond so um yeah just ask i think that's that's a good way to put it yeah like i'm trying to put together something for um the dubstep band cruella but if i'm gonna do it i want to do it right so <laughs> Once I get everything set up for that, I want to actually reach out to them and ask them, hey, I'm doing this. Can I use your music and not get flagged for it? Because, so, like I said, the, wor the worst thing they can do is say no. Or, yes, you can do it, but we want to make money off of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as long as you can get some of that money, though, right? What? Unless you, unless you get some of that money, though, right? <laughs> they want to make money off I of mean, it. I mean... I mean, I don't make any money off of my YouTube videos, but I still cut out all the copyright stuff. <laughs> all right. So I guess the first question I have here is, Dylan, where did your inspiration for filmmaking come from? Like, what made you want to get into this profession? Um, well, it wasn't originally a horror. I actually, like, when I was eight or nine, I wanted to make superhero films, hmm. which um, was before I even liked superhero films because that was before like this huge renaissance of superhero films really began. But um, but they were terrible, obviously. But I still <laughs> tried to make them with with friends. I mean, that's the same for for most people who get into this. They start off by making really terrible stuff with their friends, <laughs> and um, and then at some point I was like, okay, I'm gonna stop with like the fun capes and costumes and go blood and guts for whatever reason. I don't know exactly what the pivot was, but um, I think I just started watching horror films and I really liked them. Like Poltergeist was my first horror film. Um, really enjoyed it. It's really alluring because it's kind of taboo when you're younger. And, um, and then I realized that if we couldn't do justice to like superhero films, maybe we could do justice to horror films because they're easier to make. Like I knew that at a certain point. Um, and so it was kind of a combo of loving horror and knowing it would be easier to pull it off. And the first short horror films we made were still terrible, of course. <laughs> um, and those all went on this YouTube channel. Um, and obviously, you know, nothing came of that, but then just kept doing them still on the tiny scale on the side. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think that answers the question. Yeah, because I have your YouTube channel up right now, and I'm looking at the videos. Um, and I did mention before we started recording, um, 
Are you allowed to talk about why a specific short film was taken off your channel? Uh, you mean like why I removed it? Well, I didn't. I didn't know if you didn't want to talk about it or. Oh yeah, sure. No, I don't mind. Okay. You mean tap or tap? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I took yeah, at a certain point. I I like to have older shorts still there to show hopefully some kind of progression. Yeah. Because maybe that's valuable to see. But at the same time, there comes a certain point where um, you don't want to see that, like <laughs> the, the, the depths of the progression. You don't necessarily want to see where that came from. I definitely um, understand and, that. And that kind of hit that, um, that's, that passed that threshold, in my opinion, of, of being a little bit too, uh, too much to bear keeping it on there. <laughs> so it was a little too cringy for me. I but, get that. I get that. Yeah. So I have a question for you. Like, when you were just getting started, like you were making tapped and you were like, Oh, this is, you know, uh, isn't up to par. What, how did you learn all those techniques? Were you just going on YouTube, uh, like to kind of say, Hey, how do you progress? Like there's a yeah. new film trick. Do I just go on YouTube, see how they do it and then try to mask them, match it or something? Um, I think in terms of like try figuring out what works really well, short form on YouTube, it's just like watching other people's short, films really helped with that but in terms of the filmmaking craft um i don't know like if there's something in specific you can look to i think it's just doing it a lot that helps um and a lot of people say like oh gear doesn't matter at all it doesn't matter what you're using just do it and keep doing it and you'll, you'll be good and to some extent that's true but gear does matter like you you start out with like we were filming on on a macbook like pro like a laptop <laughs> so so of course that's not gonna look good um and they'll be like oh no gear doesn't matter that's fine it's about the skill it's about how you use it um which i guess is partially true but you know at a certain point a macbook laptop is not what you want to be filming with i mean so, to, to be fair when i made my first ever videos well not my first ever but my first dance video i didn't have a camera but all I had was a table and a laptop with a webcam built into it. And I just filmed myself like that. That's it. I mean, we're talking about this and then we're also talking about Blair Rich Project in the same, you know, time span. So I guess we should never say never about what equipment you're using. But yeah, um, but yeah so a combination of like for short horror films, I think there's a lot to be learned about just watching short horror films and then for equipment and like getting better at the craft. I think that just comes from doing and getting better stuff to use, so. Yeah. To, to, to the point of like, cause you kept coming back to Blair with Pro Blair Witch Project. Yeah, yeah. When that came out, like I remember when that came out in the movie theaters and like, everyone was like, is this real? Yeah. Like, I don't know, <laughs> did these people really, like, is this real footage? So I think it was like, uh, what was neat about it was the mystique they had on the front end of it and like the marketing they did was like I don't know if it's real so then and the yeah. internet wasn't as strong it is as it is mm -hmm. today so everyone's like I don't know where to look to find this out <laughs> you know? yeah it's hard to do that today I mean, they try to do all sorts of you know crazy marketing things now but they can't really get that exact effect anymore so it's really interesting yeah well, that was the first found footage movie that's gone on. I don't think there was anything that was really like mainstream that really came out in theaters before that point that they used the found footage, you know, trope for everything. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I'm trying you, to remember. You don't, you don't really see films like that anymore. Like there was Blair Witch Project. And then I saw Unfriended where it was literally all screen captured from a computer in a Skype call. And like, you don't see big time actors doing stuff like that like you can't imagine if tom hanks and sandra bullock were in the blair witch project or something it would be a very different movie if uh, they yeah. were in it yeah yeah i still think there's like um there's a market for them but it's kind of you have to find something new to do like yeah. searching was pretty popular um but yeah uh let's yeah. see uh travis do you have another question um, yeah, so I guess, you know, one of my questions was, uh, when you're, when you're coming up with these ideas for this, some of these films, like, what do you like, do you, how do you come up with those ideas? Like, where does it start? And where does it like progress? You know what I mean? Do you start off with like a basic idea? And then you're like, Hey, how do we make it scarier kind of thing? You know? Um, yeah, 
coming up with ideas is like the most painful part of the whole process. <laughs> Cause I obviously you don't want to start and say you have something you really want to invest in, but at the same time, it's like, ugh, it just takes so long. Um, but I think, um, for something like transfigure is probably a good example. Cause like, to me, that's like, uh, like very by the book short horror film as in like, it, it takes a, uh, um, like a formula that works very well, which is just taking like, um, how do I put it? Like taking a medium in this case, it, it was Photoshop and figuring out a way to deliver scares in a very cheap way, literally because we're just like, doing very simple VFX and that's it. Like she's just acting in front of a computer and that's the whole film. Um, and so coming up with that, it was just like, I was trying to think of how we could use a screen as kind of the second actor because we only had one actor um, because we did that for another film, which was home movies where she's watching. Yeah. So it's like, they're almost the same film, honestly, like <laughs> trying to give myself up because it's her acting against the screen and what's happening on the screen is the scary thing for a lot of the film. And that's just a way of, you know, making it so that we can make this with only two people. Um, so that's a lot of it. Just, just trying to figure out what we can do with the crew we have. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking that answers of, the question. Speaking of uh, home movies, are you sitting on the set of home movies right now? So to speak, I'm, I'm home for winter break or, what is it fall break so yes i'm on i'm in the premises like but, I uh, no i'm yeah yeah i just watched uh home videos again for admittedly the fifth or sixth time and i'm like just from this one shot of you i'm like wait a minute <laughs> it's not it's not the closet but okay it's um no that's that's the basement this, oh, okay. this poor house has been abused but <laughs> but this is the exact chair that she was in for transfigure so it's it's all over the place so yeah do you do you come up with like the idea so uh for we were talking about hashed earlier so mm -hmm. with that do you come up with an idea of like okay there's some <laughs> monster in this egg right and do you come up with the story of where that comes from and then how do you present it or do you just like hey this is kind of a, a, a like a you know, like you'd said, like taking two mediums, a, a way to tell a quick story or something like that. Because sometimes when they get done, I want to know, like, for yeah. for example, going off of seagrass, I'm like, I want more. I want to know where this crazy lady came from. Yeah, really. Yeah. Um, for Hatch, that, that was actually, that's a good example because I know exactly where that idea came from, like what spawned that. It was the idea of, and it was an image in that case, which was a finger coming out of an egg which is like <laughs> bizarre, of course, <laughs> but, um, but I'd wanted to do something with that because I thought that that would be like a, a strange image that we, I knew I could pull off with the effects. So, so in that case, it was an image and then the rest was built around what I could do with the effects, what I could do with the VFX I knew. So like, obviously it's gonna be very much in the background, the shower curtain, it's, it's gotta be obscured. Um, and then the ending, same thing. It's got to be blurred in the distance again. How do you keep that interesting? Every you know, every time you see it, it has to be obscured. So how do you keep that interesting? Yeah, um, in, in the making of Hatched, yeah. um, it, 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 and no offense, but it seemed like you... Oh, no worries. <laughs> uh, it, it didn't seem like you knew a lot about, like, 3D animating and stuff. <laughs> like, <sighs> like, when you had the idea for Hatch, did you know that... Like in the back of your mind, you were like, okay, I need to figure out how to use Blender or something and make a 3D image of this weird creature that nobody's ever seen before. I have no idea how to use this. Like what, what was the thought process for that? Well, so that, that was a school assignment, which is okay. not the case for, for the other ones. Um, and so for a class, it was, it was a very short class where we had to create a 3D character and then and that was it. That was the whole assignment. I had no idea how to do anything beyond that. And I didn't know how to do that either. Um, and so, no, that was like, that was horrifically difficult, honestly. <laughs> it was really, really hard. Um, and I definitely, I'm sure I did it the complete wrong way. Like I'm working with this 3D artist right now on something, but I'm helping him out. He knows so much more about it. And the way he talks, he thinks I know what I'm doing because of Hatch, <laughs> but I don't at all. And he, I mean, you made it look good. So, 
well, thank you. But that's partially because it's so blurry, you know, like it's a terrible, I mean, the textures were like stretched all over the place because I had designed, like I'd model it, model it incorrectly. So it was pretty much like a terrible job that I just obscured to no end. Um, that's yeah. just good film technique. Yeah, I appreciate well, it. Well, I like appreciate it, it. You made it look good because the camera, it, it's almost like how the camera is focused on the person that's in front of the camera and then everything else behind them is blurry. So it yeah. kind of worked. Yeah, we, we did have to like, it wasn't blurry enough actually. So I blurred it more in post. It was just as blurry as we could possibly make it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you don't actually see the monster, but you know it's there. Yeah. So to answer your question, I, I really don't know what I'm doing with 3D effects. <laughs> I'm trying to learn, but at the time, absolutely not. Now, still pretty much not at all. Um, but it's something I want to know how to do confidently. So in the future, <laughs> hatch two, we'll see. Ooh, hatch Here's two. A, you heard it here yeah. first, people. <laughs> you There's something to be said, twice. though, for like the... Threw eggs twice. Yeah. <laughs> There's something to be said for the the monster who's in the background where you can't really see him directly, right? And it's just kind of creepy where he's just like, you know, that shot where he's like slowly turning around and this dude, this like dude or whatever it is, is just yeah. standing back there, you know? Um, yeah. Or, or uh, what was the? I think it was rest where like he just looks over and this thing is just staring at him, you know, <laughs> in the hallway. Yeah. yeah. Well, that wasn't 3D VFX, but. Oh, you're talking about just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just in general, right? Like, you know, it's just like, you don't really see the monster, but like, you know, they're there, you know what I mean? And uh, right, there's right. something like a little creepy about it, right? Like the discovery of the monster, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's all to save, you know, the embarrassment of actually seeing what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. That would tank the whole thing for me. For sure, so. yeah. All right, Mike, yeah. did you have a question? Yeah, so uh, <clears throat> speaking of uh you know hatch <laughs> the making of i think was awesome uh, i came up Thank with the, all the ideas for it and you showed like oh i really want to make some finger effect and you know the explaining <laughs> of everything i think that's really cool um do you plan on doing that for all of your videos from this point forward just to kind of give a i guess an inside peek in the director's mind is that a good plan you thinking yeah i i'm actually today i was working on the one for rest which is the most recent film um but since that one was co-directed, I'm doing it with someone else behind the scenes, which is an interesting experience. Um, but to answer your question, yeah, that's, I mean, I just like watching other people's making of so much that I figured why not? And I think it, it's kind of nice closure for the project because you have all this leftover footage and um, it's kind of nice to, to find a way to put that into a, a packet. It's like the blooper reel and, and making of all in one. So it's something that like, I can revisit with the people who we made the film and feel some kind of like, you know, fulfillment. Yeah. I loved so. your, my favorite making of would have to be transfigure because the way you were narrating it with your monotone voice when, <laughs> um, uh, I'm sorry. Is it Hannah? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. When she, she was doing the mouth scene, <laughs> the, the way you said it was like, the shot was equally hilarious and funny <laughs> to make because, <laughs> Okay, there is a reason for that. I was in quarantine um, going back up to school because they forced from out of state. So they forced us to do three day isolated quarantine. And I made the whole thing well in there. And I was like losing my mind. But also, you know, um, I'm relatively new to making those videos. So <laughs> it is very monotone. Indeed, it is. Yeah. But yeah, that was really interesting to, to listen to like, um, how, how you took the same head that you used in seagrass and just yeah. cut out the bottom of it and pasted it onto Hannah's neck. That was really cool. Thanks. Yeah. Reusing everything we can. <laughs> so like Travis yep. was saying, Oh, go ahead, Mike. I was say, I like that effect. The, the effort you put into doing the whole, you know, spoilers, but the decapitation scene <laughs> and everything. Yeah. Um, I like I like the work and everything, and I I, I even laugh because I used to do movies in high school too. So I had that like you know little kids club feel when you're making movies. And you're like, is this yeah. terrible? I don't know if this is good. Yeah. <laughs> and it was like I I did as much work as I could to kind of you know use the the prop head and her falling down and the blood and like I think it all came well together. I think I think it ended up turning out pretty good. 
Thanks. That is one that I watch and I, I cannot objectively tell if it looks terrible or not like that, <laughs> that part. So I appreciate it. I, I wish it looked a lot better, but like with what we had, I can't tell how it looks. Glad to hear that you think it's okay. I, I mean, the oh, first time I saw yeah. it, I didn't like, like, I, cause when I see films, I like to analyze them a lot. Like I, I mm -hmm. like to see what kind of camera shots people are doing to get that suspenseful effect. And, um, like right, right when that ha happened and I saw the laptop open and mm -hmm. the cut or whatever it was, it, it was a lasso tool or a cut tool. I don't remember. Um, that just goes around Hannah's head. And I, because I, I use Photoshop too, I was looking at it. It's like, Oh, oh <laughs> I, I know what's going to happen. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> then the music cuts and I'm like, delete. And then it's just gone. <laughs> Yeah, no, I'm. I that's like amazing to hear because that's exactly what the intended, you know, beats are meant to be. Um, yeah. yeah, the yeah that that was hard to do as well, and I was so nervous about that. <laughs> but if you had, so you said you weren't like sure how it looked. If you had uh, more resources and everything like that, how would you have liked to envision that scene going? Right. Like, yeah. would you like to, the head to like dissolve off or something? <laughs> oh no. I mean, I, I like that it like snaps off. Um, but I wish it were <laughs> a lot gorier. Like I do wish I, we could do like, you know, the thing practical effects where like, not necessarily that it's like comical, like a fountain of blood, but <laughs> I do wish that we had like actual liquid coming out. Um, because there's like, we kind of cheated where there's like something coming down, but it's, it's like, it, it's not what I would have wanted. I definitely would have wanted something spewing out the top, you know, Walking Dead style. Yeah. It caught Crap, the head. It's crappy not re just... representation of what I actually did. Yes, exactly. I, I love that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then the hair, people comment about how her hair is not, you know, it cuts off her head, but not all the hair. And so the hair should still fall to the ground, like the hair that wasn't deleted. I didn't even notice um, that. And I, I don't think it's a big deal, but it's something that like before I, I uploaded it, I was like, ooh, I have no way of making that happen, but I wish we could do that. So just things like that, some more details. Uh, Travis, yeah. if you have another question, go ahead, because I'm currently looking at Transfigure to see if I noticed that. I yeah, will... when she does a circle tool. It doesn't go mm -hmm. all the way around the hair. It just kind of makes like a circle yeah. around it. Yeah. <laughs> And so then there's then like these lower bangs that should totally just be floating down yeah. but we could have we could have done that if i had thought of it before we shot it but yeah oh well hmm. i don't notice anything that's weird i mean it's not like uh an error with what's there it's just like a uh, an error with what is lacking i guess oh, so, okay. yeah yeah so like travis was saying earlier about like making a movie with what you just have um, and coming up with ideas for it. What would you describe is the planning process for a film? Like, I know there's not a lot of speaking parts in your films other than rest where it was all narrated, but like, do you have a script? Do you have anybody in mind that can help you with the film, including actors, score writers? Ex I, mean, I mean, I know you have a bunch of people behind the scenes, but people like, Hannah, Charlotte, or Brett, um, like, but like, do you basically have a set team that can help you film this stuff? Um, well, a lot of the stuff that's on the channel is super, super small. Like it's, it's family members and friends. Um, but more recently, um, I have been working with some composers who reached out, which has been really cool. Um, like for rest, I worked with this guy who's in LA now and he reached out wanting to do it. And um, what I would do is I would send him like a, a temp track. So I take tracks from horror films that I think match tonally or thematically to what the film would need. And then I send him that. I, so I take that music, I score it all, edit it in, send that to him. And then he does what he does. Like he tries to match it where, where necessary, yada, yada. Um, so that's really fun to like work with with him and um, another guy I worked with before. Um, but other than that, as far as like when we're actually shooting it, it's 
mostly just me. Um, Brett is a film student as well. So we, we try to work together when we can. I have a lot of film student friends. Um, so if, if I can get them involved, I'll get them involved. And then what poor unsuspecting family member gets roped into it. Um, uh, yeah. So Hannah, Hannah likes to do it. She's, she does like the effects makeup on her own. So she, she's really helpful with that. And she knows what she's doing with that. Um, I don't know. I wouldn't say there's like a set team. It's just kind of like whoever is available because they're very small. So you can kind of get away with doing it with a, with a tiny and inexperienced team. But um, yeah. Yeah. Like based on what you said in the making of like Hannah's really good at making the masks from your earlier yeah. films. She's really good at uh, facial stuff like that. And I think in rest, it said that the monster was played by multiple people. Yeah, she, um, well, originally Hannah was going to act in rest and then Brett stepped up because she didn't have enough time. Mm. Um, but she, <laughs> we ended up giving her like the role of Satan for most of it, um, which was very amusing to me. But um, it was also Brett and I, because at that point it was just Brett and I filming the whole thing. So, um, you know, if there was a shot where, it was more convenient for me to step in and, and put on the, the, the outfit than I would do it. If it was more convenient for him to do it, he'd do it. We needed Hannah for one part because she was short enough to stand in the doorway <laughs> and the antlers not come out the top, which oh. is very funny because she's actually, she's too short for, for, uh, for what we wanted. So if you actually look at that scene, the hallway scene, Brett, who's six one, is standing nearly touching the top of the door frame. And then it cuts to Satan and it's literally like at half the door frame <laughs> with the antlers coming out. So, yeah, I don't even know how we got there. I forgot what the question was, but Hannah, <laughs> Hannah was appropriate height for that. that. That's awesome. So is that the only scene that Hannah is officially in because she's, <laughs> yes. she's short enough for the doorway? That, that's literally it. But we <laughs> wanted to put her name first for, for Satan because that seemed appropriate. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, with your, uh, there isn't like a ton of, you know, talking in a lot of the films. Yeah. Do you, what do you use to like capture audio? Um, and what are you filming on now? And do you do like, like Foley afterwards and like, you know, post editing and stuff like that? Um, so I guess this kind of also answers the other question or a previous question. Um, the thing that I don't know slash have are a lot of people who can act. <laughs> like, um, I have friends who are actors, but they're theatrical, and that's a different, you know, it's a difficult transition in some cases. Um, and sometimes short horror films are so, you don't have to have the dialogue, so you can get away with getting someone who doesn't act. Like, Brett and Hannah, I don't think anyone in any of the films I've made are actually actors, like not trained actors, which I can get away with. And in rest, that was kind of pushing it, that's why it's narration instead of, you know, anything else, because we saw him talking that might not work. Um, but as far as, you know, uh, your question, um, otherwise, all the audio is, is in post, like none of it we capture when we're filming. Uh, so it's all fully work because that's just, it's easier to get cleaner yeah, audio. Yeah, that's usually easier to get cleaner audio like that. Yeah. And also we don't have, um, I don't, I have like no audio equipment, which is a huge <laughs> bummer <laughs> and i need I mean, to fix that you're, you're looking at my audio equipment right here yeah it's audio equipment is is interesting it's kind of uh, i i don't fully grasp it but um yeah so i have like a road a road video mic that's ancient now and in fact i think it's worse than iphone microphones now um like i actually do think it is worse because we've compared and um so yeah, we'll use iPhone microphones sometimes if it's if it's a, a voiceover that sounds better on that versus the Rode video mic. Um, so for audio that and then video, I've been using the it's called the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera, um, which is great. It's I, I mean a lot of people use it for good reason I think. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then whatever lights we can scrounge up and <laughs> use. Garage LEDs lights, and LEDs. Garage, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, Mike, do you have anything? 
I was thinking a lot, you know, when watching the movies about like horror tropes and stuff like that. Like again, not to be keep bringing it back, but uh, in Hatch, the first thing I thought of when he started when he saw the garbage can and he looked up and saw the French fence, I was like, "Dude, you're in the kitchen. Grab a knife. Grab a knife." And then he opened the drawer and grabs it. And I was like, "Oh yeah!" And then he goes <laughs> in the bathroom and sees the thing, and then just shuts the door and walks away. Like finally, somebody gets it. Like, <laughs> oh. So, what do you view as a horror filmmaker of like tropes that need to go? Um, well, I have a very strong opinion on, on this stuff because we did a short film. It's called Behind the Frame. It's one where Hannah's holding up pictures. Um, mm -hmm. That's one where if I could choose to, I would remove it from the channel because really? I really, I, I cannot stand that film. But, um, and either Hannah hates it as well. But Really? It's an interesting yeah. idea. I know. Well, I think some, some people do enjoy it, which is why we, we, I've kept it up there, but um, I do like the idea, but I think it, I think everything about it other than the idea was kind of botched, honestly. And that was Hannah's first time acting since we started and she's a lot more comfortable now. And she like wants to burn that film. Um, so I, mean, I really like the feet just like hanging out. They were just like, this is the show. don't even get me started. Oh God. <laughs> But it's so good though. I mean, it, it, you know, it's a classic. It's a classic. You know, I'm I'm learning to make film, and this is my yeah. progression, and it, it feels good for that. But there are some good parts in it. I thought it was kind of neat. I appreciate it, but but so to the reason I brought it up is because that character is so dumb, so dumb. <laughs> she does everything wrong, and that was at the point where I was like, okay, it's she's servicing the plot. She'll do what she can. Her stupid things will will allow the plot to progress as per usual for most short horror films. Um, and then we got a ton of comments that were like, wow, this character is stupid. And I was like, yeah, you're right. I don't know how I didn't see that. Um, and so Home Movies was the one we did right after. And that was essentially made to rectify the errors of, of that character and to give Hannah her redemption. Cause she <laughs> felt, she felt, you know, that she had to redeem her, her character's image. Um, and so in that one, we were saying, okay, the character has to try to escape. There has to be a good reason that she cannot escape. And she has to try to fight back. And I think those two things, like now that we've done them in one, and people like that about it, I can't not address that. Um, like, I, I, feel, I feel the need to address that in every film since. Um, so like in Hatched, he doesn't really try to escape, which is one thing. I, I thought Hatch, I thought he was kind of dumb, but I like at least the knife <laughs> yeah. thing, at least the knife thing um, that was thrown in there because I was like, okay, he's a little too stupid. We have to, like, he has to try to, to fight it. Um, and then the backing away thing and like even him throwing it in the trash. People give good, um, you know, they're, they're pretty generous to short horror film people when they do something slightly smart because it's so rare. Yeah, um, it is. So, yeah. so Yeah. Uh, but tropes other than that I, characters being smart like I really try to do that now if I can um, and then I don't know what other tropes that I would have fallen victim to before that I'm sure many I'm just trying to think I mean there was one that no offense again but I thought was pretty dumb. oh no no um, the pretty thing Oh, another one. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like waking up, the waking up and it be everything being normal. That's a trope that I can't stand. That's in that. But, well, um, well, not even that. Like the hiding under the blanket. Like, yeah. Like that, Charlotte covered the blanket <laughs> and the monster was obviously coming in. You don't follow it. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, so that part was written for a child, like a very small child, like six oh, okay. years old. Okay. And then we we're like, oh, we don't have that um but we're not going to change it for whatever reason i don't remember <laughs> the reason at this point um so yeah that one's old enough that i I've, I've laid it to rest so it has it has a lot of problems yeah it's way more enlightening knowing that was for a child because that makes a lot more sense for everything that kind of happened in that scene i just was like yeah. this girl's like you know she's in her like 20s and she's hiding under the blanket <laughs> after she it was saw, like a face come into the I mean, room it, it's a typical yeah. thing that a kid would do though like right. i remember yeah, that laying in it makes a lot more sense yeah like i remember it, laying yeah. in bed i would hear a noise in the hallway like a and i would instantly cover my head and wait until the monster was gone 
because <laughs> like even my wife is ra raising her hand right now <laughs> um like i but remember then would doing you, that would you follow it out into the dark after no <laughs> after i get waking up, up shut my door <laughs> no it's still unforgivable yeah no that i i kind of wish we could have done like a making up for that video just to say this was written for a child not i mean you know to cover our tracks <laughs> yeah but, maybe <laughs> but um yeah yeah other tropes uh, i will I say that after uh, in the hatched movie or in the, sh the the little short, when he did the first egg and like an ear fell out onto the pan, <laughs> he just kind of looked at it like, I don't know. I guess you win some, you lose some, right? Yeah, you know? Maybe they're just maybe yeah. they're just bad eggs. And that part got me a little bit. I was like, really? Like, you yeah, know, you just came out of that egg, and you're just like, okay with it. <laughs> no, this is this is actually so therapeutic because all these problems, there's very specific reasons for them. That was my roommate acting in that and oh man he did not want to do it but um <laughs> god bless him he did and he like no offense to him he like would reject any emotion i tried to to give him like it would be like okay can you try to you know xyz can you i, I you know, typically don't want to micromanage an actor but when they're a non-actor it's a little different so i was like okay can we try having you raise your eyebrows a little bit here, like act startled. I was trying to really coax him into it and he would not do it. He like refused. And I was like, oh. okay, we're, we're going to have to play a deadpan. There's no other way. So yeah. Yeah. He's, he's deadpan a lot of that film. I didn't but, know you were working with Marlon Brando. Oh, I know. I think, I think it must've all been method and I didn't know, but <laughs> no, it is, it is funny that reaction. Let's see. Um, over the course of you making films, um, I've noticed that there's a lot of change in scenery. And then recently there's been like the same set for rest as the same set for transfigure as well as home videos. Um, like, how do you find like the perfect set for a movie? Like, do you have an idea in mind or is it like you know what we don't have a lot of time to film this let's make it work here at the house um well for for those three it was mainly because of covid okay. um like especially transfigure and home movies home movies um was the first one that was like right like we filmed it in like march or april 2020 so we were just at home um and <laughs> this is this is kind of scary and, um, <laughs> now you're good. I thought I'd turn this thing off. Um, so that one was because of COVID. Uh, Transfer Gear was also because of COVID. Um, and then Rest was just because, well, it was kind of because of COVID, but it was also just convenience. You know, if we're hauling like equipment and stuff, even if it's not a lot of it, um, to a location that we can't, you know, like wake up in and start doing it. Um, it's just a lot of time that's gone. And so, yeah. But if we were more professional, it certainly would not be, you know, someone's house three yeah. times. <laughs> so, uh, Let's see. I wrote a lot for that question. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Um, I guess I'll skip to the next one because you kind of answered it. Um, planning process. Um, when you film in a public place, like let, let's say Seagrass, for example, um, did you have to go out there first and prepare the set? Like there was trash all over the beach. Charlotte's obviously picking it up. Like, do you just find a cup or a can, smother it in beach sand, <laughs> and then like try to dig it into the ground? Or is, was that stuff already there? Um, seagrass was kind of weird because um we filmed that like the whole thing in three hours which is short for us and then um like it, the whole thing was done in like 18 hours like edited with the sound which was i think partially because i thought it was going to be so terrible like i didn't i wasn't even going to show it to anyone and then i showed it to one person they're like i kind of like it and i was like i don't believe you but okay <laughs> and then showed it to some other people and, and they did like it so that was a weird one 
there was not a lot of preparation. We did not have a script or anything. Um, we did stick stuff in the sand, uh, like five minutes before <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty like haphazardly done. Um, the thing that took a little while for that one was like, there were times where I would dig out like a little trench for me to get down low in the sand and film. Oh, really? Um, yeah. Which was a pain. Oh God. It was a nightmare. <laughs> but, uh, and then burying the head in the sand was kind of cumbersome. Um, but it was all in such a short amount of time that I wouldn't, wouldn't say any of it was very pre-calculated. Um, but I'm trying to think of for other stuff. Uh, I mean, like for rest, we scripted that out thoroughly and like we planned that out thoroughly as well um, because we knew it was a little bit, uh, for, for our scope, it's a little grander. Um, so that stuff we planned for like weeks before shooting it, which is more normal for, for these kinds of things. Sure. Um, but a lot of times it is very run and gun. Like, I mean, pretty thing is pretty old, but that was also like, we just went and shot it. And there was no plan, really. There was a script, but it, it was a six-year-old who was supposed to be the character. So I was kind of thrown to the wayside. Um, but yeah, if that answers the question. Yeah. Uh, Travis, you got one? So one we haven't talked about, and I'd love to just kind of hear like your thought press on, process on it, uh, was 1105. I liked that one. And I think it's because it was the apocalyptic world that I like. Right? Yeah. We were like, they're going to die. It's just a matter of when, and uh, and at eleven oh five. At eleven oh five, precisely. Right? It looks like you got a little better at the effects and everything on that one. So, I mean, just like, let me know. Talk to me about that one a little bit. Sure. Yeah, that was that was actually the other one that was a class project. We because we um, and Mike, you were saying you did short films in high school. We were lucky enough to have a high school um, like program, a film program, and so some friends and I did that for our senior project and that like required planning. Like they literally required it for the grade. So that was a little bit bigger as well. Um, and that I like almost didn't even, well, t for two reasons, I almost didn't put that on the channel one. Cause I didn't know if it was like horror, um, because it's a little more like low key, I guess. And two, because it's kind of long and <laughs> some might say boring. Um, so that one's kind of strange on the, like to be on the channel, but, um, yeah. What was the question again? <laughs> Just call me boring. That's all Does you it, have to say. Like I'm no, sitting no, over no. here and I'm like thoroughly enjoying every all <laughs> seven minutes. I'm like, why isn't it longer? <laughs> oh no, I appreciate it. <laughs> I, I like that one too. I do think it feels very, very student film, which some of the other ones don't necessarily as much to me. Um, but partially because it's a like post-apocalyptic thing and we can't sell that, you know, it's like they're in this really nice, like totally furnished <laughs> house that the apocalypse must have like just happened. It's COVID March, whatever. And these, <laughs> these guys are like running out of food and we're supposed to buy it. So I do think it comes across pretty cheap for what we're trying to do. Um, but it is a little bit like, um, I think like there's actual characters in it as opposed to some of the other films. Like they're just kind of like, you know, pawns for the whatever horror thing is happening. Whereas in that there is meant to be kind of a character thing happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, I, I could actually relate to the characters where it's like the alarm goes off at 1105 or 1104. I don't remember. And they prepare themselves for one minute. It's like, it's coming. <laughs> and they're, yeah. just, they're just waiting for it to knock on the door and see if it's going to open this time and it doesn't until the end yeah yeah i do like the idea like that's something i would love to uh, like try again and do it more justice in the future um that was the second time we had shot that script because we did it back when we were like freshmen and it was so bad but so <laughs> good too um using copyrighted music and everything. It was, it was a good time. So that was meant to be like, oh, we're, we're doing it again. It's going to be so much better. And now we're, it's already at the point where I'm like, that feels so mediocre. Like we could do that so much better now. So I should probably retire it, but, but I do like the idea. 
I think you did you did a lot of, like a lot of cut scenes right to show like the yeah. of time right which I think yeah, yeah. helped progress that you know what I mean just show like a uh, you know a longer period of time taking place you know I thought that was yeah the different shots thank you, know? you yeah it was um we a friend of mine did the music for it which was just piano and trying to figure out how to um, it was kind of like a chicken and the egg type thing where we had written the music, but we didn't know how long the cut was going to be. And it, it very much depended on how long the music was. But the cut also, like the music depended on how long the cut was and the cut depended on how lo long the music was. So it was interesting editing that. Just a little aside, but yeah. Well, I liked it, so it was good. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> well, you, so you did mention, uh, and I will uh, um say this so you did mention like hey maybe we'll go back and like you know uh maybe do it a better or do it a different way next time are there any of the films that you've made so far that you're like man i want to expand on it and i want to make it longer i want to do like you know uh you know a half hour movie or like a yeah. short film or something um i i did write a feature like like i was i can't remember how many pages it was but a feature length version of home movies because I like I think it it's good to obviously to practice writing feature length screenplays but um that was one that I like we had a whole backstory that got cut for the short film um about the character like the the creepy lady so um that was kind of elaborated on in in what I wrote and it's it's so bad because you know I, I haven't written feature screenplays really so of course it's like starting from ground zero with short filmmaking it's it's terrible, um, but I would like to. Um, I would like to adapt like some of them longer if I had the chance. Um, I don't know which ones exactly. Um, obviously, like, home movies I was interested in. Um, now, not so much anymore because I've actually done it, and it's. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. But yes, I would definitely like to to maybe something. make something like Transfigure, but like that house is specifically haunted and. Anybody that goes there and uses their computer, something happens to them. Kind of like how it happened to Hannah. Yeah. There's so many ways to take it. I mean, that's the thing. It's like, they're so short. They're so bite-sized that they could be anything. <laughs> so it's like, it's barely a foundation. But yeah, I mean, which is also exciting. So um, I'm interested. That seems to be the one that people most want, like, to see elongated. Um, but yeah, I don't know where it would go. Hey man, eleven oh five. You know what I mean. You can make <laughs> that. I think there's a lot longer to movie. Eleven oh six, and then eleven oh seven. Oh, eleven oh seven. That's awesome. It's built-in sequels right there. I'm telling you. <laughs> oh man. All right. Yeah. Who knows? Um, Mike, we'll do another question from you, and then we'll take our first break. Well, it's funny because you're saying 1105 is one of your more favorite ones. And as much as I like Hash, I actually, I caught Jamie on one of the, like, the ends because I started with your newer stuff and went all the way to the older stuff. But I, I really like that one. I like how especially, Thank you. you know, again, uh, but with the twist of what he actually wanted versus what you assumed he was going to be looking for. Yeah. You know, and the, the monster, the creature, whatever it was. Oh, you want to talk to him? No, I want him dead. Like, <laughs> it's just like, oh, from the side. It's exactly so, how it goes. I don't know. I mean, yeah, yeah. And that's all I was like, oh, that was a really good one. I really like that. Like, I have some questions and stuff right now, but I wanted to mention that since you were saying that 1105 was your Thank favorite. Thank you. You want to see one that's longer. I would like to see, I would like to see like a full, you know, a full thing about that. I think that'd be a really interesting concept. Uh, thanks. Yeah. I, I like that twist as well. Like going back to horror tropes, I guess. I would definitely like to play with tropes as long as I, there was a twist that was, you know, new. Um, and so that one, obviously it's like the generic, oh, I miss someone I want to contact them, but it's a demon, oh no. Um, like that's a plot of so many supernatural horror films. Uh, so doing something that's totally set up to be generic and then having that twist was kind of fun. That would, yeah, I, I, I would like to do something more with that. That one feels old to me as well. A lot of them feel really old. They're not even that old, but they feel really old to me, um, including 1105, um, but Jamie especially. So, I mean, yeah. three years ago. Yeah, yeah. I like to think that that's a long time <laughs> to go. <laughs> so. I mean, compared to rest, yeah. Yeah. 
Well, thank you. Yeah. All right. So Mike, did you have a question that you wanted to ask? Uh, yeah. So, uh, what is your favorite film out of the films you made so far? Out of all the films uh, on the channel? At least, at least, yeah, on the channel. I mean, even if it's something that's not on the channel, just out of, you know what I mean? I'm sure being the person that made them, you have some you like more than others. You may not mm. have a favorite, but you know, what is what is the film that you like the most that you've made? Um, probably home movies, because it was so nice to uh, get what I felt res was redemption after Behind the Frame. <laughs> um like both for Hannah and I, because I was like, behind the frame is like, oh man, but that it's so long also. Um, it's long. It kind of blows an idea that I like. Poor Hannah was put through it and like came out the other end, not like pleased with it. And so the fact that we um, also during COVID, that was the first film we had during COVID and we were kind of stuck. So it, it was nice to, to have something to show for that time. Um, and then also using old home movie footage that was actually our like home videos from when we were children. Yeah, I was um, looking at that. I was like, is that really Hannah? Oh, yeah, that is Hannah. Yeah, yeah, which was really fun because it was something I kind of wanted to do for a while. Um, <laughs> because there's actually there's a shot of little Hannah like having a an absolute tantrum at a butterfly museum. <laughs> and because none of the butterflies would land on her. And <laughs> it's hilarious. And she has this like, totally stone-faced like angry child look and every time like we happen to watch home videos it just so much looks like like a paranormal activity ad or something like the angry child is about to like their eyes are about to roll back and they're going to do something <laughs> so i kind of always want to do something with that and the fact that we we got to and people seem it seems to be effective for people and i just think it's like it's very simple but but um but not too long or anything so probably that one. Okay, that's cool. Thanks. <clears throat> All right. I think since we've been going for about an hour, we will take our first break. And I think when we come back, we will kind of quickly get through the, the remaining questions that we have. And then I think we'll all take a look at rest. And then we will give some questions on that. And... I guess critique it is the best word. Sounds good. All right. So everybody stay tuned. We will be right back with rest. My phone is going off. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Um, we were talking a little bit when we got back. It's not on camera, but we were talking a little bit about uh, like horror movies in general, which ones we like and stuff like that. I wasn't here for most of it because I was getting a drink. Um. So yeah, I think we'll wrap up the questions, the remaining questions that we have, and then we're, we're all going to take a look at Dylan's newest film, uh, Rest, which, based on what we've seen with Threshold, Jamie, Pretty Thing, like, all the way up to Rest, I think Rest has got to be your best film so far. It's so good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear that. I appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so... Travis, do you have any questions at the moment? No, let's watch it. <laughs> let's watch it, he says. Uh, Mike, what about you? No, I mean, I'm good. We can, I mean, I, I, there was one thing that I was thinking about asking, but you kind of asked it, I've answered it a couple of times. It was just mostly about like what difficulties have you had, you know, when you're making your films. But it mm -hmm. seems like, you know, the creative process can be its own difficulty, I guess. Yeah. Let me see if I can add anything of interest to that. Um, Try to think of the biggest difficulty on rest. And trained actors. That's, you know. <laughs> trained actors, yeah. Working with people. Those, uh, yeah. Um, like I, guess, I, I, guess, I guess what I would ask, like, while you were filming any of the movies that are on your channel, did anything go wrong? Oh, my God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so wrong. Um, there's a lot of short films that are just not on the channel because they were <laughs> so bad. There's especially one that we did last fall in between um, home movies and Transfigure that we shot the whole thing. We like we finished it except for some like the soundtrack was still the temp music because I never sent it to the guy because I didn't want to. 
Um, so there's a lot that like, and that just comes from if the, the script or the idea isn't good. Like um, we filmed it, it was made technically fine. Like it would have been um, acceptable, but there, it's completely nonsense. Like what's happening. There's no train of thought that is consistent in that film. So there's a number of projects like that. Usually they don't get that far. Usually it's like, oh, we have an idea. Maybe we'll start it. There was one that we were doing um, a couple of weeks ago. What was it? Or I guess it's like a month and a half ago um, that I was going to do with Charlotte again, actually, who was the seagrass person. Um, and we started filming it and it just didn't pan out. So there's a number of things that if it really doesn't work, it's just not worth finishing it because they're so short. Um, but there's always roadblocks on the ones that also work out. Usually they end up shaping um, how the film end up, ends up coming out. Like it's an effect, we can only do it one way, then we're gonna have to shoot the rest of the scene around how we do that effect, um, stuff like that. So definitely, definitely difficult things. And like with, with Hatched, whatever we couldn't do with the VFX that informed what's happening um, with the rest of the film. So, yeah. Trying to look on here because a long time ago back when i was in high school i did actually make a short film i'm definitely not going to show it on the podcast because oh boy there's so much i could have done better but <laughs> it was still yeah. an idea that i had and it lives for sure it's out it there. lives it lives uh god i think I'll have to have what's your that. uh what's your process for like submitting them to like film festivals and do you like do you get a certain amount of feedback and then you're like all right i think this one goes and what's that mm -hmm. like process i mean does it take a long time is it usually pretty quick um that is a really good question because that's something i'm trying to figure out right now like in the past i've submitted some stuff to like small festivals which is where they belong because they're not you know there's barely even characters in them they're, they're very bite-sized so if you're going to submit them into a festival it's got to be like short horror film festival that runs one month in a small town yada yada and then you put the little laurel on it and people think it's like more impressive blah 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 um but but at a certain point it's like it's not really worth it because well in, in my opinion i'm coming to the to the realization that that's not worth it for me anymore because like um i can't even go to these festivals it's partly because of covid partly because they're all over the place there's not that many local ones um and that's like the main point of them to meet people so um so with rest and some newer ones i like wasn't going to submit them into anything and if it was it was like very very small like didn't have a submission fee um and in fact like there's some that we submitted transfigure into that were like super cheap so i thought why not that are still coming back like i haven't heard from them and it's been like a year which is well not a year it's been months and that's like, that's typical. It takes a long time for them to get back to you. Um, but with rest, I figured we would submit it into festivals that were like um, punching above our level, I guess, because at this point, I don't see a point in submitting them unless it's like actually going to give us something in return. So um, I did submit it into a bigger festival that there's like no way it'll get into, but um it's actually, I was, I was mentioning earlier, I reached out to someone for advice that never got back to me and it was about a film festival, wondering if I should submit. Um, so it was probably a mistake, but still did it. And I'll hear back in like March about it. So I have no idea what's going to happen. But yeah. I mean, I think if anything, rest could definitely be submitted to a film festival or something. Yeah, thank you. I, I, it's just like about what film festival, I guess. Like, um, if it's a small enough one, I don't really want to pay a, a fee to just slap a label on it. No. Um, but if it's a big enough one, then they're looking for more, uh, you know, they're looking for more. So it's hard to know where it belongs, I guess. So what are, uh, what are their criteria? Are they like, uh, you need to submit in like certain you know, format or anything like that is, you know what I mean? Like, Hey, you have to pay $50 or a hundred dollars, whatever it is to submit it. Um, yeah. And stuff like that. It's um, for the one I submitted to, it was like $75. Oh, 
which is, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> it's basically buying a lottery ticket, which I don't normally do. So it was kind of um, a strange slash unique decision, but um, they required, because it's a bigger one, they require, it's like filling out like a job application, which sucks too. So it's really like, it's likely to yield nothing but pain, but um, I had to like write down specifications about it. They didn't care that it was on YouTube. It's becoming less and less common for festivals to care if it's a premiere, um, which is really nice because a lot of people like to show their work instead of sitting on it for months and months and then showing it. Um, but just filling out like specifications and stuff about everyone involved would be a lot harder if there were more people people involved. So that's a plus, but um, it's kind of a, it's kind of a drag, honestly. <laughs> Do you plan on making longer uh, videos? Cause I know yeah. you're saying most of the stuff is bite size, which, which works. Um, but I just didn't know if you had, you know, plans of trying to make something a little more longer, a little more long in length, excuse me. Yeah, no, um, I definitely would like to. I don't know how far down the line it'll be before I make something that's like, I, I mean, the end goal is to make feature films, like, you know, long right. films, but um, that's so hard to do. It is. Fun, mainly it is. funding. So, I mean, like where I'm sitting now, it's like completely impossible. Uh, yeah. it, feel, it feels completely impossible. So I have no idea how far down the line that would be. But um, yes, the goal is to do that. And otherwise, like going just from bite size to a little bit longer, you know, like 10 minute, 15 minute, something a little longer than three minutes. Mm -hmm. That's something I'm also interested in doing, but it's hard to know what that is made for. Like if I'm making something for YouTube, I think being shorter is actually preferred. Like I don't watch too many short horror films that are 20 minutes long. Um, there are a lot I'm, of them out there like that. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's, it's harder for those to succeed. Not that they aren't good but it's harder for those to succeed. They're harder to make. Um, and I don't think it needs to be that long to pack a punch uh, on somewhere like YouTube. So um, I know like for my thesis film next year, it'll probably be like 10 minutes. So it's not a lot longer, but it's, it's definitely going to be a much bigger project than what I would normally do. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I don't know where my typical short stuff will end up being in the future, like what length, but um, Beyond yeah, and that. you say it you say making a long feature film like that is impossible, but that's where I would have to disagree because depending on the quality of the film, you can make like a 30 minute long film as long as you know like okay, camera shot for this, this guy's going to be right here. Uh I need paint on this guy's face in order to make this scene fit. Like as long as you have everything organized I feel like anybody can make like a 30 minute film if they were really dedicated and the biggest problem is having the time to do it. And I definitely yeah. understand that. No, I totally agree. I, I meant more like it feels so overwhelming, the idea of it, that it feels impossible. Yeah. Um, people are doing it. Like people end up, I think everyone expects someone to say, here's some money, make it for me. I'm, you know, a huge producer, Hollywood producer. <laughs> and that's so rare, obviously. And people do just end up doing it themselves, self-financing and more power to them. But that seems really scary. That seems like yeah. impossible almost. It's not impossible, but it feels impossible. It, it, it's not impossible, but you, you have to think how much time and money actually goes into making a big yeah. film like that. Like I've talked to indie film actors before and they were talking about like how in a lot of indie films like hardcore indie films, you're not going to see somebody fake punch another person, but you will see them like grab them by, by like the shirt collar and bring them close or something because yeah. indie filmmakers don't have a budget to hire a stunt coordinator or anybody like that. Mm -hmm. So like they make do with what they have. That's all they can do. Yeah. Like it's, it's inevitable that um, if I, if I'm able to shoot a long thing or any filmmaker who's filming their, feature film debut um it's inevitable that it's going to be incredibly small scale so it's just about making sure that that one location potentially that one location that the whole film is set in is interesting you know like the first saw movie it, i mean there's more than just that one location but 
like making sure that could be such a boring film, but sure. they did a good job of keeping it at least entertaining enough to keep you going. Um, so that's like the biggest hurdle, I guess, trying to figure out where budget meets a good script. Yeah, because yeah. if you think about it, the first Saw movie was basically just in that one bathroom for the entire movie. Yeah, yeah. And th they did such a good job with it, too. Mm -hmm. It was it was amazing. Yeah. And Saw 2 came out, and it wasn't even supposed <laughs> to be Saw. Yeah. I mean, they did get funding, still super cheap, but they got some funding because they made a short film, which was all in, all in the bathroom. Um, so, like, that that's an avenue that potentially I'd be interested in or I would, I would hope could yield something, um, a short film, getting people interested in financing something, but I don't know. That's far out there. I'll save that for the future. We'll see what happens. Get some sponsors or something. Yeah. People to help G with Fuel. it. Yeah, G Fuel, exactly. Yeah. G Fuel? Oh, geez. For my horror film. <laughs> well, you're on YouTube, so you're halfway there. I know. Oh my God. Your stuff is amazing. out there at least. That's true. Yeah. Do you feel better come crawling? <laughs> I would Coke. take them. Or Coke. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah. Lemonade. <laughs> in the middle of this podcast. Like a can of Coke in all your scenes. Just everywhere off in the <laughs> corner, have like a quick camera pan and like Coke. <laughs> well, I think there's rules about like what you can and cannot do with the product. Like yeah. I was reading something about how iPhones, like villains aren't allowed to use iPhones in films. <laughs> yeah that's awesome <laughs> so maybe he's using a samsung damn you <laughs> exactly no this is a real thing i think it was ryan johnson who said like a big thing that he didn't know if he should tell people is that like with knives out if a character is using an iphone they're not the killer like you're safe so, <laughs> that's awesome it's pretty funny yeah so you would mention uh, though oh go ahead sorry so what does your budget normally look like, for example? I mean, obviously, every film requires something more than the other films. But what was, like, your average budget for shooting? Um, usually, like, 50 bucks. That's, like, the... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, um, wrong with that. I mean, they're, they're for being, you know, a, a low-pay but high-quality movie. I mean, that, that says something in and of itself, too. Yeah. No, I, um, I mean, the lower it can be is, is better for me, obviously, but... <laughs> um rest was the most expensive because we had to buy like like the the antagonist the costume we were looking for a cloak that didn't look like a party city cloak um <laughs> which costs some money yeah um but like you, you put the money in where you know it needs it or it'll tank the whole film yeah. so that like had to be better than like a little cape coming out the back um yeah, so that was that was a little bit more, but average like fifty probably for for makeup stuff usually. I could just imagine like in rest, um, instead of having the cloak that you guys did have, I could just imagine <laughs> Hannah in like a cheap oh, a, a cheap Dracula cape and like a New York Yankees t shirt and shorts. That's what it would have been if we really? hadn't bought some oh no, I mean we wouldn't have done that, but like oh. that was what we that was what we had. <laughs> so um yeah that was one of those things where i was like we were looking at some some cheaper costumes and i i told brett i was like brett we i know for sure we're going to need to invest in this cloak because it'll look so bad if it looks remotely bad so yeah yeah it's, that's it's the actually... thing i struggle with a lot when i'm trying to make videos like look i know this thing will really help me in this film but it's like $75 and I'm only yeah. going to use it once. Do I really exactly. need Exactly. That's a huge struggle for me. Yeah. And that was something like with the antlers we got. Those were expensive too. And I thought, well, maybe I could do them digitally. But then I was like, oh no, getting it practically is a great idea just in case. We got them. And I ended up having to do them digitally on top of the real ones because the real ones uh, were not the right color and I couldn't they were literally white and we needed them to be black. And oh. so, yeah. So yeah, it's like, hard, it's hard to know. Them would have done anything either. Yeah, well, it might've, but um, yeah, they, they weren't quite the, like the size we wanted anyway. So yeah, it's hard to know when to spend that money and what's going to be worthwhile. Yeah. It's crazy to look at some of these films and hear you talk about 
like what how much editing actually went into it because mm. if you didn't tell me those horns were digitalized i would have never known i'm glad to hear that thank you <laughs> yeah I, I would have never known I, I thought they were just like a prop well one of them is like you can see half of it like you can see half of it beneath the digital one but it's just a black horn shape cut out on top of it okay um yeah, I mean, it made it easier that there was a practical thing there to actually just trace. So, yeah. Um, when you mentioned, uh, like, not putting anything on YouTube because it suits better for, like, short <laughs> stuff. Like, yeah. how else would, like, if you wanted to do something longer, like, uh, I yeah. mean, it is the best distribution tool. Like, there's no other way mm. you can get it out to the masses. Um, is there something else you would use or just like put it up on there if like it's a 30 minute movie or something like that? Um, I don't really know. That's like, I don't know what the best thing to do with a project once it's done is. Like, I know um, from what I understand, when a short film is in the 20 to 30 minute range, it's usually more professional. It's either completely unprofessional or like completely pro. And <laughs> If it's completely pro, they usually don't put them on YouTube because they go through festival runs and they can't put them on YouTube a lot of the times. So those films like don't see the light of day until like two years after they're made, which is kind of like a huge drag. And I really wouldn't want to do that. But at the same time, um, I don't know, maybe that is the right thing to do. I'm not really, that's like kind of out of my league right now. So I don't know what I would do with a film that long like what the proper thing to do with it is probably yeah, I, I, de I definitely know what you mean when you say like uh you make this creation and you want to get it out there yeah and like believe me i do the same thing with my youtube videos i edit them and i make the thumbnail for them i create a title for them and all that and i want to get them on youtube as quickly as possible but at the same time i'll edit one video in one day and then I won't edit anymore. And then the next day I'll come back to it and look at it again. It's like, yeah, that part seemed really rushed. I'm going to make some changes mm -hmm. to that. So it's always good to take the video and don't yeah. upload it right away. Like proofread it or yeah. proof, proof edit it. Yeah. No, that's completely true. Like with behind the frame, we were talking about a bit. That one could have been trimmed down like three minutes. And I was like ready to get it out, to shoot it out. And we did. And um, if I had sat on it, like you're saying, that would have helped a lot and come back to it. So in that sense, sitting on it is good, but like sitting on it when you know it's done, that's where it's, you know, you start to like fall out of love with it and then you don't want to, you don't even care about it anymore. It's kind of yeah. sad. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, I guess behind the frame would be a good one to talk about this because I didn't even think about it until recently when I was looking up um film editing and stuff do you ever have problems with like reflections yeah <laughs> <laughs> like that, um, that's a big problem like if somebody has yeah. glasses or something like even right now you guys can see yourselves in yeah. glasses <laughs> yeah um not as much as you would think but yes if i like i'm trying to think of specific instances um like in rest there's a whole scene with a mirror but that was like made for vfx so that wasn't a huge problem or anything um with behind the frame there was inconsistencies in the reflections based on you know like what was previously shown behind whatever is it's supposed to be in the reflections different from shot to shot but that's like not really a reflection thing that's a continuity thing um, yeah like i mean like in the first matrix movie where Neo is about to go see the Oracle and the camera is focused on the doorknob, but you can see the camera in the reflection yeah. of the doorknob. Yeah. No, they, I, they didn't even try. <laughs> I have not had too many problems with that. Luckily, I guess I just steer clear of reflections as much as I can, but, but it has happened. It just hasn't been a huge problem. Um, but sometimes it's easy to paint that stuff out. Like if it's locked down, you can, you know, do something about it. Yeah, because you don't um, want to limit the actor's movements at all. You want to give them free motion to move around. Right. So if you are going to have your actor wear glasses, then get some, like, um, I saw a video on it. It's, like, frost spray, and you just spray that over your glasses, and it creates, like, 
a faded blurry kind of look to them mm. and the camera so you can't won't really show tell. up yeah huh. and the camera won't show up in the reflection of the glasses you can't see know. anything but like whatever yeah. <laughs> it's fine it's they an indie it film it's fine <laughs> it's like anytime we had a mask in the film completely blind no air holes total disaster <laughs> just like stumbling around it's a good time don't be such a prima donna. <laughs> exactly. Stop critiquing. These actors over here, they're not getting paid anything. They think they own anything. <laughs> God, poor actors. <laughs> Speaking of actors, do you plan on doing anything else with um, Charlotte and her family? Because a lot of the films I see recently are with Hannah and Brett. Uh, that's because Charlotte probably wants nothing to do with it. <laughs> um, she... I mean, they take a while and like, they're not the reason that we're seeing Charlotte. Um, so yes, like, again, I, I did try to do something with her recently actually, and it just didn't work out. Not because of her, just because um, the, the film was a problem on its own, but I would love to. I just, uh, I don't know what that'll be. I don't have anything in mind right now, Okay. but yeah. All right, so no, well. more, no more movies with your old roommate, the, the deadpan? <laughs> he, it's funny because he wants to do one now. He totally, oh, no. <laughs> he has wiped, because we, we did two things. There's a project on the channel that's like a cinematography project. Yep, I that see. He was all, yeah, he was roped like into that, that as well. That was Thank cool. you. He, <laughs> he hates horror. He, he doesn't even like movies. And he <laughs> didn't want to act in it. And we did that project together and he was like, what are you making me do? He would look over at like how I was editing it because he didn't know what any of the effects would be. And he'd be like horrified, like disgusted by what I was doing to his <laughs> poor face. Why is my leg in my arm? <laughs> exactly. No, we had all sorts of unused. You know, one where he was like standing on the ceiling and I like stretched out his mouth and it didn't get used or anything, but just like all sorts of bizarre things. <laughs> and he was so like, okay, this is... That. He was like, this is stupid. I hate this. I'm never doing this again. And there was no acting involved in that, really. And then I was like, okay, can you help me with this other project? Because we, we weren't allowed to go into each other's um, dorms because of COVID. So mm -hmm. it, it was just him. Um, and he said, okay, I'll do it. Had no fun doing it, hated it. And now that he's seen it finished, he wants to do another one. <laughs> <laughs> like having a child i guess or something yeah, he's totally, I, I he's totally forgotten that. the pain <laughs> oh no that's a backstory there man but yeah so maybe maybe there's something more for him but we'll see yeah. all right so shall we watch dylan's newest film released two weeks ago and it's already at nineteen thousand views oh my god Things seemed normal at first. It was a nice day. The sun was out, it was quiet. But I realized I had no idea how I got there, standing in the driveway. And I didn't think that clouds were supposed to move that fast. Things were off. I could feel something with me. I couldn't feel the water on my face. I 
it was a dream, then I was in control. But I wasn't going to take any chances. I just needed to find a way to wake up. He isn't real. This is my dream. dream. If you die in a dream, you wake up. Maybe that's my way out. Something quick, painless. I had to be certain it would kill me because who knows what he would do. The pain was real. And I wasn't going to wait for him to do anything worse. I didn't know exactly where I was going or how I'd do it. I could find a road. Walk into traffic, jump from someplace high, I could... I was having, why couldn't I control it? Or maybe I could. should have killed me. But death wasn't a way out. It was how I got here. This wasn't a dream. It was hell.
All right. Fantastic film. I really think that was one of your best films on the channel so far. Thank you. Appreciate that. So just by watching that, um, the, the kid was Brett, right? Yeah. He really is a good actor. And you said he doesn't want to get into acting. He wants to be a screenwriter. I acting is definitely, he wouldn't like not believe you if you told him that. <laughs> I try to tell him that. He, yeah. He, he doesn't think he is. So. Like the narration actually helps with his role. I think like you can tell he's like thinking it in his mind. It's like, it's just a dream. I'm in control. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that coupled together with like really good sound design and stuff, like everything is on par and like no film is perfect, I don't think. But in your library on YouTube, that one is really close. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thanks so much. Um, a couple of my favorite parts in that um, was when Brett was walking through the woods and then the trees started slowly turning red. I thought that was a really, mm. really cool effect. Um, the first, The first time I showed that to my niece, actually, she was like, oh, there's just a rope and a chair in the middle of the woods. And I had to turn to her and explain to her, is like, well, he thinks he's dreaming. So that's how he's justifying this. Like, he, he's thinking, how can he wake up from this dream? Like, either fall or kill yourself. If Inception has taught us anything, if you feel like you're falling, then you will wake up from your dream, most likely. And then he does it, and he did not wake up, and then he suddenly realizes, like, I'm not in a dream. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, some people seem to be confused about... I don't really understand why they're confused, but of course that's me saying it, so I have, like, no authority here. <laughs> Um, like I, I got some people being like, oh, it's so convenient that there's a rope and a chair in the middle of the woods. I'm like, I don't know. After everything you've just seen, that's, that's the weird thing. <laughs> but, but so I appreciate that, that, that like made sense to you. Yeah. Um, like, so uh, the, the question I had was, so when he sees him in the hallway, right. Where he sees the, the devil antler guy, um, and he like gets the cut on his wrist. Is that kind mm -hmm. of like alluding to like, so he did cut himself and that's how he died. He committed suicide or something. Is that kind of your thought process with that part? Um, I don't know what to say. What makes it sound more sophisticated? <laughs> um, no, that wasn't the thought process. I like that though. Um, <laughs> he, no, why did, I'm trying to remember why we chose that specific. Like, maybe I, because I, no matter what he did to himself, he couldn't feel anything. But right yeah. when the devil gets involved, like, I'm going to make you feel everything. <sighs> yes. Yeah. That I mean, that was the point of the scene. It was meant to be also just, like, that intense pain he can feel. Mm -hmm. um, so even, even if he can't feel, like, sensations that are pleasant or sensations that are normal, he can feel that excruciating thing. I don't remember why we chose the wrist. Um, I was nervous that that would be like offensive or triggering to people um, that's understandable yeah and, and also the hanging part and i actually did get a comment where someone was like you know offended by it and um i didn't really know how to deal with that so yeah i mean it's a short horror film so i was kind of like you know there's a lot of offensive stuff in short horror films that has to do with death and dying but um yeah, I don't know in retrospect why we chose the wrist, but I like your idea. So that's it. That's We're going with that. All right. Yeah. There you go. I get credit um, when you say yeah, that. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. <laughs> Put my name on there. <laughs> yeah, so something I've wondered, and I didn't put it together until just now. Um, my question was going to be, how do you make it so, like, obviously you didn't hang Brett. Otherwise, he wouldn't yeah. be here. Um He's gone. Poor Brett. <laughs> he's never showing up again. There's a reason why he's not acting anymore. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's not here, is he? Very sad. Actually, I think I see his spirit in the reflection of that ship picture. Oh, no. <laughs> Shit. Um, but anyway, like, obviously you didn't hang him. Obviously in um, uh, Behind the Frame, Hannah didn't, like, 
mm-hmm. hang get, get hung right there and i didn't put it together until now did you use the same effect as you did in home videos where you like took a picture of uh the actor jumping and then Mm -hmm. messing around with it did you do that um i tried to do that we like the way that we wanted to shoot the hanging part did not work at all um we had a harness this is something in the video i was i'm working on so it'll probably make more sense like when there's visuals to back it up but we had a a climbing harness Mm. and um it just looked like he was like repelling for something i mean he couldn't get he couldn't properly uh position himself so that it looked like he was um you know suspended from his neck rather than his waist um we needed a safety harness instead of a rock climbing harness but by that point it was too late for us so we tried like some shots where he it was out of focus and i did that effect that home videos effect where it was like animating a still as it falls Mm -hmm. and it's out of focus so you can't really tell it's a still um but it didn't look that great so we like reshot it three times that was the most difficult part of of shooting um and in the end there's yeah there's no effects on what happens there it's just a couple shots that are edited together um the shot where like he starts to jump um and then the shot where his feet like he's dangling from a branch and he i mean it's it's really simple how we ended up doing it um and we just relied on the editing so yeah hello you can fix anything when you're editing (laughs) yeah it's true there was one i mean one effect we had to do was um when he's dangling from the branch he's right next to a tree so like i had to like paint out the tree Um, oh so there was that but but relatively speaking compared to other effects it was not um not like a crazy effect shot, thankfully, because it would have been difficult. So, yeah, but based on what you've actually been saying about how these films are made, I've often heard the phrase like, "There's three times that a film will change when you're writing yeah. it, when you're editing it, and when you're filming it." Does that happen yeah. a lot with you? Yes, for sure. Yeah. I love that. I love that saying. Um, writing it is the honeymoon phase. Shooting it is like you wanting to strangle it and kill it phase (laughs) and then editing it is is like honeymoon part two editing it is probably like the realistic phase because like you both hate it and start to see what it actually is you kind of like marriage counseling you're trying to make it work yes yes exactly (laughs) that's perfect Um, and you do you just keep working on it until you get it to work so yes when you get comfortable right where you can leave the bathroom door open kind of a relationship exactly (laughs) exactly yes and you're ready to, to send it out, show it to people. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's different than like the three different movies thing, but both are true. Like the three different movies thing is definitely true because once you see what effects you can do, you can pull off, then it changes it. Um, when you're filming what you can and cannot do, like the harness that changed it. Um, and like when we were writing it, we wanted it to be, we wanted to have a wide shot where you see him hanging and the, the you know, the demon um standing across from him so we couldn't get a wide shot of him hanging because of the harness thing it just changes yeah everything changes as you're going so (laughs) yeah you try and make it work uh mike did you have any questions about rest yeah i had a a couple uh first i just want to say that the mirror threw me off at first when he's like (laughs) waving in the mirror and you don't start seeing the different movements i was like is that mirror off what is going on here how did you guys was was that intentional yeah uh what which part that it's off yeah that it's off yeah you can you can tell it's intentional because obviously like that's the shot but how how did you guys even film that because did you take oh like one shot in the mirror and then take another and then just kind of like impose it on the one side versus where he was yeah because like i see there's shots like that happen a lot in movies like where it's like the reflection isn't matching up um Mm -hmm. and a lot of times in short films, they're in, it's in a lot of short films. And so if we were going to put it in the short film, I wanted it to overlap because so often they'll, it's filmed the simplest way, which totally makes sense. But it's filmed where you get, you know, your actors here, then the mirrors here. And you film it once where the actor's doing something, film it once where the actor's doing something again. And then you bring them two together, split it down the middle. They're different. But since we had them overlapping, you couldn't have... Um, 
it had to be a green screen on one of them. Okay, that makes so that, sense. Yeah, or we would we would have rotoscoped, you know, cut them out. But green screen is just easier. So, so it was pretty simple. It, it was just a green screen, but um, we wanted to make it harder to tell how we did it because it's his hand is going in front of the face. Um, yeah. No, that was a cool shot. And then uh, they cut on the arm. That that was a yeah. cool thing. How did you guys now? How did you guys do that one? Because that that's a practical effect. I'm pretty sure. Um, the, well, the cut is real. Um, and that was just makeup that I actually did for this one. So I, I feel pretty good about that. Cause I'm not, <laughs> that's, that's my first time doing that. Um, but it's a pretty simple, like actually the prosthetic is actually really simple. Uh, it revealing it, it was like, we took, we shot his arm with the wound and then we shot his blank arm and we took skin from the blank arm, put it on top in post, like in the edit. And then mm. animate it revealing. Um, okay. And then like adding in some fake, literally some digital fake blood to make it look like there's an actual liquid coming out because you couldn't like cue the liquid to start coming out when the thing in After Effects is happening. Um, True. Yeah, it was, it was pretty difficult to do, honestly. Like it's a pretty simple solution to it, but like making sure the skin tracked on um, and getting the, the digital blood to go in there. It was, it was, ended up being harder than I thought it would be. But. So you can get the digital blood to come out of the cut, but in Transfigure, you can't blow someone's head up. <laughs> I know. <laughs> come on. I know. <laughs> no, it's funny you say that because I totally, in hindsight, I totally could have had stuff dripping down because it was just like a PNG of fake blood that I animated. Um, so I could have done that, but coming out, I don't know. I'll go back. I'll do a. I'll do a director's cut or something. It's more acceptable <laughs> yeah. these days. I mean, yeah. there there is something that I saw on an old YouTube video from a channel called Indie Mogul. Oh yeah. Oh, you, I you know you're Mogul. familiar. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Um, those I were think... those my superhero films days. Oh okay. Oh yeah. Um, I think at one point they were breaking down special effects, and the scene was basically a guy killing himself with a a gun in his mouth. And I guess the way they did it was, like, as the shot went off, they flashed a light, and then they had, like, a tube that shot mm -hmm. blood and guts on the wall. So, mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Maybe if you did, like like Travis was saying, he wants a lot more gore. So maybe <laughs> if you had some kind of contraption that would, like, like create a fountain of squirting blood uh, that's behind <laughs> Hannah as she Sounds falls... That sounds amazing. <laughs> I, I um, just want more blood. Let's put it that way. Just I more think, blood. <laughs> I think you're right, but I think we would have had to have uh, done that when we shot it. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't know how much I I could do now. Right. In post. Um, but definitely, that would have been a lot of fun to do something practically and then and then you know, superimpose it. Oh. Yeah, I have no idea how you would build it, but I don't know. <laughs> that, that's no that's something for the props department. <laughs> You know, I think the special effects artist um, for the thing was like 19 when he did the thing or something. Yeah, that was the first movie that he did. Is that right? God, mm -hmm. that man. He was really legend. Oh, God. That's, um, that, that hurts. You could, like a, you could use like a tube and some sort of air compressor, just like fill the tube with the gunk and goo, like a bunch mm -hmm. of liquid on top and just have yeah. it like blow out. Yeah. <laughs> That, that would have been great. a whole other thing. Plus, I think you, when you're making up, you're like, this is my last little bit of blood when you're putting Oh, it yeah. <laughs> That's like, right. That would have been yes. like a whole jug. That was it. That was it. Yeah. Well, we made the blood for rest, so we could have we could have made more if we needed to. But at the time, we thought that was all we had. So, Do you... Well, uh, learning and advancing in your craft is, you know, being able to pick up the tips and tricks and, you know, getting better yeah. as you go. So. No, that, that's definitely true. In talking about like picking up the tips and tricks, do you do you go into it like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this new effect uh, uh, of sorts, and you know, like uh, like for example, like the the shaking head, the Jacob's ladder shaking head thing. Do you like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Like I'm gonna try and put it in one of my films or something like that. These classic, you know, um, mm -hmm. movie kind of shots and everything. Um, I think the biggest thing is that like in writing the next thing, it's always, you know, the tools you picked up from the last thing. So you can, I'm trying to think of what it was um, that I'm thinking of in specific. 
not the head thing that for transfigure that was new territory like for each film there's always some effect that's kind of new and then there's many effects that i've already used before that i'm just using in a different way um like you know uh you pointed out the in home movies when she jumps up and there's the, the image of her that is manipulated that i used in the cinematography project um there's just all sorts of effects from previous projects in each subsequent project um and and then like one new effect that gets added to the roster for the next time um so like for the red trees even uh that was from a project that wasn't on the channel that i did um like a couple months before and i wouldn't have written that into the script if i didn't know i could do that so but like as far as like the jacob's ladder example um there aren't that many things like from films that I guess, cause I'm thinking so small scale, I, I haven't really shot that high, I guess. Um, but what I can't you're think saying of examples makes, like that. But what you're saying makes sense, right? You don't like, yeah. write, like you didn't write that scene in there unless you knew how to do it. So you're not writing right. things just to say for the sake, like, Oh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to figure it out. You know what I mean? You're yeah. Not- yeah. Yeah, exactly. I think the hanging thing was the thing that we were, I was praying we'd just figure out. <laughs> and it's like, ultimately, there is no effect. So we failed. But it's it was still done by some other means. So there is a way, usually. <laughs> okay, well, we ended up going a little bit longer in this episode, but that's perfectly fine because we have been playing this for quite a long time, actually. And Dylan is going to go back to college. Where, If you don't mind me asking, where are you going to college at? I'm at Ithaca College, so it's upstate New York. Okay. It's cold place, <laughs> but, but it's nice. Where are you guys based? Are you guys all in the same area? Uh, in Denver. Denver, cool. Yeah, Tra- Travis is actually my brother-in-law. He m- married my... Oh, cool. She mar- he married my, I'm sure, handful of a sister. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the other oh, room. Cool. She didn't hear you. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I have expect- to shout I- it. Yeah, I'm expecting her to just burst through that door. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> um, That's cool. Yeah, I'm in uh, Traverse City, Michigan. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah, you would expect Traverse City to be a film town, but it really isn't. Oh, no. No, everybody thinks that, but it's really not. Mike, do you do any more film stuff now, or was it a thing of the past for high school? I mean, I would like to, but it became a point of, like, trying to herd everybody together to be able to do that. It's like wrangling yeah. cats, like you were saying. It's hard. Yeah, to, yeah. Unless you have a vision and you're going to kind of act yourself, and if you have the chops mm-hmm. to do it, it makes it easy. But when you're trying to get, like, a crew of people together, it's... Mm-hmm almost impossible unless you're like-minded like how you said you know people that write you know people that want to do the same thing you're doing that makes yeah. so much of a difference yeah. um so unfortunately i have not been able to but i would thoroughly enjoy being able to get back into it yeah that's cool well I hope when, when you move to. when you move back to michigan i can edit i can film contact me i would love to do something with really anybody Heck, Dylan, if you want, if you would like any help in any project, um, if I can help out with it, I would love to. I'll let you know. What yeah. are you, um, what what are you trying to do most? Is it editing, or or do you prefer to to work on set? I mean, well, like I didn't tell you this, but at the beginning of this podcast, I'm going to insert a little video explaining that I'm going back to college. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, I am doing digital cinematography at Full Sail University online. Oh, cool. Yeah. I know Full Sail. That's super cool. That's yeah. exciting. Yeah, Travis actually went to Full Sail as well, I think. Oh, you did? I'm a Full Sailor, yeah. <laughs> very, very cool. Yeah, I've heard a lot about Full Sail. I'm surprised, actually. I'm surprised none of my um, my friends ended up going there. We're all over the place at different film schools. But, but I yeah, I know Full Sail very well. It's cool. Yeah, so I'll be going there. Um, I mean, if it's possible, I wouldn't mind working directly with you on set, but, um, like if distance you need, is one thing. <laughs> yeah. That, but, that, that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, if there's anything I can help out with, like, 
uh, script writing, if you're planning on doing something with a lot of speaking or um, editing or creating something in Photoshop, w whatever, I, I would love to help out with it. I appreciate it. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Well, now we're in touch, so. Yeah, you need yeah, a exactly. bearded redhead. <laughs> I'll <laughs> definitely let you know, Travis. <laughs> Sprint yeah, there right now. In film, damn it. Get more of them in there. Equal yeah. You know, if you use me, um, make sure there's a lot of blood. Or I think, just don't use me at all. <laughs> I think the problem is people assume there's no soul to, to steal. Oh, you know? Oh, oh okay. <laughs> no, right. I'm kidding. Well, Actually, Han Hannah's like a strawberry, <laughs> strawberry blonde. So, so, so there's something. I'll give you it's that. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, H Hannah and Dylan <laughs> together can turn you into a zombie for one of their films. It's true. It's true. <laughs> yeah, if the opportunity ever comes up, I'd love to help you out. I'm actually, uh, I'm from Michigan, but I'm in Virginia right now because I'm in the military. Oh, so cool. I'm only, you know, I'm only a drive away. Yeah. Yeah, no, because that's where I'm. I'm in Virginia right now. Oh, really? Well, yeah, my, my, my home is in Virginia. Uh, so. Sounds like you've got an extra. <laughs> that's cool. Someone to cool. someone to hold the Coke can in the back. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. He's, you got it. He's perpetually not taking a drink of Coke. He's just holding it like <laughs> fan face. He's just a creepy guy in the back background yeah. holding Coke like it's a little Easter egg. <laughs> you can use my face for all the random shots and like mirrors and backgrounds, and people will be like, oh god. Oh, the that? creepy ghouls. Oh, that's yeah. good. I like <laughs> Hidden background ghosts. Oh, that'd be great. It's it's like in DreamWorks films, like they're teasing something else with like a hidden, um, like a drawing of Sully from Monsters Inc. or something that's just kind of in the background on a poster or something like that. Lurking, yeah. That's cool. All right. So yeah, we kind of went went off about personal stuff, but wh whatever. Um, so yeah, thank you guys very much for joining us for. The Good, the Bad, the Blank podcast. This episode was about horror and just the horror genre in general. Mainly it was about Dylan Clark because I was able to find an indie filmmaker that actually responded. And I was able to get, get him on here to answer a couple questions that we had. So thank you, Dylan, for joining us today. Thank you, of Travis. Course. Thank you, Mike. I think... I think that this was really fun. I learned a lot about yeah. you as a person and your films as well. That that was really awesome. Yeah, no, I really, really appreciate it. This was a lot of fun for me. I'm flattered that someone would want to know this much about this stuff. So, so thank you. It's been a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe in the future, we can have you on another episode, depending on Just how let me know. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool. Give me your new episode, a new short. <laughs> the new oh, short. gosh. Who knows when that'll be? But yeah, yeah make sure to highlight me in my coke cam. Yeah. I'll throw you in like one frame at the end of the film. I'll just put you in there. Just like a quick flash and then credits. That actually, there's there are some of those and some other stuff I've done. It's like <laughs> memes. It's not good. Anyways. Yeah. It's kind of like in Fight Club where you just splice in like oh, yeah. things in the movie. Oh, yeah. Tiny little frames. God, I forgot about that. Yeah. All right, so yeah, this episode will be uploaded closer to Halloween. So happy Halloween, everyone. <laughs> All right, we will see you guys in the next episode. Thank you guys for tuning in.